Okay, so we're going to prove that a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals are perpendicular. So we want to prove that parallelogram ABCD is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals are perpendicular, aka if AC is perpendicular to BD. So let's go ahead and start the uh, proof. So this is an if and only if statement. So we're going to do um, the P implies Q first. Okay. So we're going to assume a parallelogram A, B, C, D is a rhombus, right? So if it's a rhombus, this implies that all the sides are equal. So AB is congruent to BC, which is congruent to uh, CD, which is congruent to AD, right? So we know all the sides are in fact congruent. So let's go ahead and put that there. And we also know that um, since ABCD is a parallelogram, right? So ABCD is a parallelogram implies that the diagonals bisect each other. So that means AP is congruent to um, PC and BP is congruent to um, PD. So let me go ahead and do that. So this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. So now what I have here is I can see that triangle APD and APB are congruent by the side, side, side congruency postulate, right? And um, if these two are congruent, right, that means angle APD is congruent to APB. And I know by linear pair that um, the sum of these is 180 and they're both congruent. That means they are 90, right? So that's sort of um, what I'm going after. So let me go ahead and do that here. So I know that AB is congruent to AD. So let me first consider a triangle APD. and triangle APB. So I know that AD is congruent to AB. So AD is congruent to AB. I know that AP is congruent to AP. And I know that um, DP is congruent to PB, right? DP is congruent to uh, BP. So these three things together imply by the side, side, side congruency theorem that triangle APD is congruent to a triangle APB. Which of course, like I, what I said earlier, that implies that APD. So this implies that angle APD, let me make that P a little nicer, APD is congruent to angle APB, right? APB. So, like I said earlier, by linear pair, I know that a angle APD plus angle APB is 180, right? So by linear pair, I know that the measure of angle APD plus the measure of angle APB is equal to 180. Since I know they're equal, instead of writing APB, I can just write two APDs, right? Two measure of angle APDs. So this implies that two measure of angle APD is equal to 180. Then I can divide by two to get the measure of angle APD is equal to 90. So now I know APD is 90, which of course means APB is 90 and all these are 90, right? 
So, of course, that this implies, right, this implies that AC, right, AC is perpendicular to BD. And that's what we set out to do. If we have parallelogram ABCD as a rhombus, then we know that AC is perpendicular to BD. Okay, so now we're going to prove the converse. We're going to say, okay, if we have parallelogram ABCD where its diagonals are perpendicular, then parallelogram ABCD must be a rhombus. So let's go ahead and start that here. So let's do the converse now. So Q implies P. So we're going to assume um, ABCD, or let's write it like this. Um, we're going to assume that um, AC is perpendicular to BD for a parallelogram ABCD. So uh, we know that um, AC, right, is perpendicular to BD implies that the measure of angle APD is equal to 90, which is equal to the measure of angle APB, right? So we know both of these are 90. So of course, that means that angle APD is congruent to angle APB, right? Well, we also know, okay, so we have a parallelogram ABCD. So we have ABCD is a parallelogram um, implies that the diagonals uh, bisect each other, right? So AP is congruent to um, PC and um, BP is congruent to PD, right? We also, so let me go ahead and uh, draw that here right so um we also know that um ad is i mean yeah the opposite sides are equal right so um, if this is a parallelogram we know that ad is equal to bc and ab is equal to cd so we also know um so we can do this again a b c d is a parallelogram implies right implies that a b is congruent to c d and um, a d is congruent to b c okay so let me put a line over that so we have that this guy here is congruent to this guy here and uh, this guy here is congruent to this guy here right okay so we know that triangle APD is in fact congruent to triangle APB right by um, the side angle side right congruency theorem so we have uh, consider triangle APD and triangle APB, right? So we have, um, let's see, DP is congruent to BP, right? DP is congruent to BP. We have angle APD is congruent to angle APB, right? And we have that AP is congruent to AP. So AP is congruent to AP. These three things together imply by the side angle side congruency postulate that triangle APD is congruent to triangle APB. So this means 
that actually um, this, right, this one, we can actually take one of them off because we know that this AB is congruent to AD. So that means we can actually take one off here because we know CD is congruent to AB, right? So um, this implies that um, AD is congruent to AB. And of course, earlier we had that, um, so let's go ahead and write this out. We have AD is congruent to AB. And we have that AB is congruent to uh, CD, right? And we know that um, AD is also congruent to BC. So we can actually write BC here, right? So what this tells me is that we have a parallelogram where all of the sides, right? All the sides are congruent. So that means this isn't just a regular parallelogram. This means that ABCD is a rhombus, right? And that's the proof. We've proven that um, um, a parallelogram ABCD is a rhombus if and only if AC is perpendicular to BD. So this is really useful because if we have a parallelogram where we know that the diagonals uh, um, hit each other at 90 degrees, right? Intersect each other at 90 degrees, or they're perpendicular to each other, then we know that that parallelogram is actually a rhombus, right? And vice versa, if we have a rhombus, then we know it's diagonals intersect each other at um, 90 degrees as well. And that is it.